These protesters are marching to the residence of Putin Ivanishvili to interrupt his sleep. They want the interior minister to resign and insist that only Ivanishvili, who chairs the ruling Georgian Dream Party, has the power to make him go. It is the eighth consecutive day of their protest, called Shame. It started peacefully on 20 June, but turned violent with protesters and riot police clashing until morning. Protesters now want the interior minister to take responsibility for the violence. It is their final demand, but the protest started for a different reason. So what made thousands protest in front of the Georgian parliament for eight days in a row? On 20 June, Russian MP Sergei Gavrilov addressed the Georgian parliament from the speaker's seat. He was invited to address an inter-parliamentary orthodox assembly. The reaction was immediate. Opposition parties occupied the speaker's chair and refused to let him take it. The event was cancelled and activists from the Russia is an occupier movement came to protest outside. The Russian delegation was escorted out and left the country within hours as protesters followed them demanding they go. Protests against Russia have grown stronger in recent years. The slogan, 20% of our country is occupied by Russia, has become common referring to the conflict in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. With that in mind, activists demanded the government explain who led Gavrilov into the parliament and especially into the speaker's seat. And so, the protest was born. There were thousands that night outside parliament. The protest was peaceful and vibrant. But the peace did not last long. Opposition leaders addressed the crowd demanding answers. They called on them to peacefully occupy the building. As protesters attempted to break into the parliament, they clashed with riot police who had been deployed behind. After several hours of struggle, the police started dispersing protesters. They did not give prior warning. Police deployed tear gas and later a water cannon. They also fired rubber bullets indiscriminately into the crowd. The clash was so intense that 240 people had to be hospitalized, including police officers. Two people lost eyesight in one of their eyes after being hit by rubber bullets. Two ended up in life-threatening condition and one remains on life support. 35 journalists were also injured. Some suffered serious injuries, mostly from rubber bullets. 305 people were detained during and after the clashes. Since then, protesters have gathered every evening outside parliament. They cover one eye with their hand, symbolizing the police violence. They say they can see more now, even with the remaining one eye. Many wear eye patches with 20% inscribed on them, referring to Abkhazia and South Ossetia and their opposition to the Russian government. That is why we have created this uh, movement, so that we will show people that actually there are many people who are against Russian occupation in Georgia. So for us to see, for example, like Gavrilov chair a session in our parliament, would not, that we would not be fine with that. So that is what we have been trying for years, which as we have seen, we have not achieved because obviously we saw him sharing the session. Uh, Russians are expanding their self-made border every day or once in a month, whenever they want to do that. So there are Georgian citizens who go to sleep in Georgia and wake up in an occupied territory. So we believe that we should stand with them. Doesn't matter that we live in Tbilisi, it doesn't affect us directly, it affects our citizens. So. They blame the government and urge them to take responsibility for their actions. Our inner, inner feeling tells us to stay. And, uh, we, don't, we don't negotiate, we do nothing. Just satisfy our three demands and we go home. That's it. And each day they don't do that, uh, the rating of the uh, ruling party goes down. So they pay the political price. It's better for them to satisfy our demands now. Like it, we have one minister, come on. Many government officials have said the protest was fair and that the consequences were unfortunate. However, the interior minister maintains that the force used against protesters was legitimate. The chair of the Georgian parliament has resigned over the Gavrilov affair. However, this is not enough for protesters. They urged the government to release the detained protesters and demanded next year's elections be held with a proportional system. Both demands were gradually satisfied. But one demand remains, the resignation of Interior Minister Georgi Gaharia, who refuses to go. Protesters say they will not stop until Gaharia answers for the violence and steps down.
Ah. 